The Summer Showdown's in full swing, and we're here with day number two of the Eastern Region. My name is Trid. I'm joined by Avril to bring you two first of three matches here to decide who is going home and sending one team over to the Grand Finals tomorrow. Get to the business side now. We, we've kind of been in the business side for some time now. It's you know been uh, four <laughs> of our top teams here in the tournament stage. Now the Summer Showdown, our third tournament of the entire year, and our final one actually before playoffs. So this is the final opportunity for our teams to kind of get a title in before we actually go to what is going to be the end of the entire season upcoming. So you know for teams like Fusion that missed out a little bit early in kickoff clash, Shanghai as well that haven't had a title yet so far. Everything is still online to play for Seoul, their second title, Guangzhou. This is their first tournament showing in what has been two years. So they're in the running as well. Let's get you up to speed with the state of the tournament so far. Like I said, we've already had a day of action. Let's pull up that bracket and see how things stand. Shanghai Dragons and Seoul Dynasty. That's going to be our second game of the day, Avril. And they're all positioned in that effectively upper bracket final, if you will. And then when we look in the loser's bracket, the charge are going up against the Fusion after losing their matches yesterday to the aforementioned teams. That's going to be our first matchup of the day. One team's going home. One team is going to get a second chance in the tournament. Absolutely, and I think, you know, in some ways the bracket has gone exactly the way you would expect. The top two seeds, number one and two, between Dragons and Dynasty, have moved through to the upper bracket final. Dynasty, though, not without a bit of turmoil in their particular game. Guangzhou, though, could quite touch up on the Dragons, and now they'll be facing the Philadelphia Fusion in that lower bracket. Loser goes home, winner moves forward to the next loser bracket game, the loser's bracket final, and the winner of that will end up going towards the grand final. The Philadelphia Fusion their roster up first. Saw this team in action yesterday after, you know, what was a pretty hot, poor start going 0-2 down versus Seoul. They made a pretty strong comeback. I mean, they, they kind of got this reverse sweep dream going. Third map, fourth map, both going their way, forcing a tiebreaker map number five. But some cases kind of, I don't know if you would say it's expected for the fusion, but it seems like the map five horrors strike again for them. Yeah, five map Philly. They're always out here struggling on the map five. But let's take a look at the roster for today. MN3, Zest, Fury, Aim God, and Fixer. Uh, this has been kind of like the roster we've seen towards the latter end of the Summer Showdown. MN3 has now become effectively the starter, I believe, after last yeah. week um, when they stopped running Carpe as the starting lineup. Doesn't mean Carpe is necessarily out of the lineup altogether, uh, for now anyway. But MN3 has been a starter. And I think Fusion have had a couple more of those. I think Fusion has looked like they could win more games with this starting lineup line particular keeping MN3 in seems yeah. to have at least leveled the team up slightly a few daggers in the uh for now anyway I heard there I don't know I'm not gonna read too far into a trip I'm sure, uh, <laughs> I'm sure uh, <laughs> it is what it is no we'll see um you know and this has been an interesting stage so far for Philly Fusion because like we're talking about map fives here that the, they've been to three map fives in their last four matches Guangzhou Seoul Hangzhou then Seoul again of those three map fives they've lost all three of them the last time they went to a map five, and actually they go to a map five quite a lot. Look at their history. Uh, it was versus Valiant in the regular season, week 16 here. Now they did beat the Valiant, but since then it's been a bit of a lost streak. Then they beat Hangzhou. Those are the only two wins they had over the course of the entire qualifier, right? They, they kind of squeezed in on a 2-4 record. They needed a 3-1 or a 3-0 versus Hangzhou. They got that scoreline. Um, they're here in the tournament, but... It's one of those situations where they get so painstakingly close two times now to beating the adversaries in Seoul, but just kind of falling short. If they want to win this tournament, if Philly finally want to lift a trophy and be an organization that after five years gets that podium win, that number one spot victory, they got to beat teams like the Seoul Dynasty. But for now, they got to get past the Guangzhou charge first. I love that you brought up their uh, map five record, Avril, because the last time these two teams faced off in week number three, did go to five games, charge, ended up beating Philadelphia Fusion. So they are basically replaying one of their five map losses that have happened in earlier on this stage. Uh, let's take a look right. at the charge roster, though. Jimmy, Choice A1, Kron, Xerneas, Farway. Um, charge nine yesterday, apparently, Avril. Um, very anticlimactic end to Midtown uh, in that 3-0 uh, defeat to Shanghai Dragons. It does happen. Uh, it always still does manage to surprise me when it does, though. <laughs> and it was probably one of the, the more egregious ones because, you know, you see in the replays, and I believe Jimmy and Choi, they just literally both step off. Um, and it could be one of those situations as well where you look at, look, they're both looking at each other. It was like, wait, whose job was it to stay on? I, I thought you were staying on. And the other was, oh, no, I thought you were staying on. And they just both walked off, right? So, mm. uh, <laughs> 
yeah, very anticlimactic. Who knows what would have happened there? I don't know that they would have won that map. We're talking about Midtown versus Shanghai here. I don't think they would have won necessarily, but uh, you kind of rob yourself of a good opportunity. We did see how close that Circuit Royale was, but again, no dice for the Guangzhou Charge. Now, you did mention the previous matchup versus Philly. I want to dig a little bit deeper into that because not only was it map 5 shred, it's actually a reverse sweep from Charge. We've actually now also seen Philly nearly get a reverse sweep versus Seoul, but Charge actually got a reverse sweep versus Philly, and that's something to remember. That's even more heart-wrenching, isn't it? You get the 2-0 advantage, three maps in a row, bing, bang, bong, you're out of the, well, out of the match already. So, just waiting for the Kron, uh, waiting for, I believe Kron was actually sat down actually, waiting for the charge to just fill up the lobby and then we'll get into the game number one. A little bit different from previously, we don't have uh, set map types anymore because we're going into the tournament stage, so there's a little bit more variance I believe here, Avril. Um, still not sure what map we're going to be starting on today, well, but it is going to be a control. I think this is important for Fusion because as we saw in the previous series and, and something I've noted on quite a decent amount is uh, they do have particularly strong maps. Uh, I, you know, we'll just talk about those for now. Circuit Royale plus New Queen Street I think are the strongest maps for the Philadelphia Fusion have been for the majority of the entire year. No matter what meta we seem to be in, those two end up always being the strongest maps for Philly Fusion. Um, and Soul Dynasty, they actually picked New Queen Street versus Philly, and that ended up being a bit of a mistake. And you know, that's something that uh, Herex and I talked about yesterday, where it's just like, you know, Soul had the opportunity to go to Coliseo, where they actually beat the Fusion on. They didn't do that. It's good with New Queen Street, where, uh, you know, if we remember you know, a few matches past now in mid season, man, it's the final week qualifies when Fusion actually beat Soul. And Queen Street was one of those linchpin maps that Philly really dominated Soul on. So that, to me, is still a little bit of an iffy situation coming through from Toby, the head coach. But. Hey, Soul still won map number five. Basically, what I'm trying to get at, though, is in that reverse sweep run through for Philly Fusion, those two maps between Circuit and New Queen Street really allowed the Fusion to bring us to a map five. So map choice is going to be a big one to pay attention to throughout this series, then seeing if they can pick their preferential matches, uh, maps, and get themselves back into it. Maybe um, we're still doing the... Uh, loser of the previous map gets to pick the following one so it does mean yeah. that if they drop maps they have a chance to bounce back quickly kill any momentum that runs forward into the series um, so hopefully it should keep it quite competitive here I would not want to see either team go out to a 3-0 today and honestly looking at charge versus fusion I don't think these are teams that could 3-0 each other at present is just my assessment of things I mean, they went to five previously. I think they have the capability to do that again. I also think that if we do go to circuit, and there's a very high chance we do, it's going to be super competitive because Charge also showed that yesterday versus the Dragons, it was a very strong map for them. They nearly took down the Dragons on that map, and that would have been, by the way, the second only map loss for the Dragons this entire tournament stage. Right, Dragons are otherwise flawless. They have currently the best match record and map record of any team, including versus Soul as well. Um, it's something like 19 and 1 now. No, it's actually more than that. I think it was. Uh, yeah, it's. Uh, I'll figure it out, but it's a lot. They've only <laughs> dropped one single map so far. I don't know why I'm blanking on this. Yeah, 6 times 3. Uh, 21 or something? I don't know. 21 and 6 times 3 is 18. But... Yeah, so it's 21 and 1. Amazing. So, but they are undefeated, as you said, via matches, Shanghai Dragons. So they, they haven't yep. had the streak ended. That sets us up nicely for uh, the next match, however, because I have a feeling they're going to have the that's going to clock quite a bit. Uh, players are all in the lobby. They are just about ready, and we're going to get into map number one. I believe I had someone whisper in my ear from production tell me that the first map of this series is going to be Li Zhang Tower. We'll get that confirmed on your screens in just a second. And there it is, Li Zhang Tower, coming up shortly. Right up. And I don't know if this really necessarily favors anybody. We're in the sort of now meta in stage three in some showdown where map choice generally doesn't matter as much as it did in the midseason madness. But for a team like Philly, you know, as I said, escort, get towards a push, might be a little bit of preference there. Uh, for Guangzhou, they kind of won and lost everywhere already. A, a, a great matchup I think we need to focus on here. It's a couple ones actually. It's definitely in the DPS line. I think there's no real surprises there. Jimmy has been a very important member of the charge so far in their campaign through this uh, third stage and also uh, the return of Jimmy into the Overwatch League right he's kind of led the team via that Sojin quite comfortably he even had a great match and showing versus Lip yesterday no Lip still mostly had the better of Jimmy but you got the circuit Jimmy started to show his chops again kind of put Lip to the ground a couple of times that's going to be important he needs to do that versus MN3 who also currently looks to be on fire on the Sojin attention to the damage lineup when they come through. They are running mirror compositions so far on Night Market, although we don't really see much variation here. It's, we on, sometimes see the odd Farah come out when it comes around to Gardens. Here they are on the rollout. 
Yeah, maybe Choi will go towards the fire, but I think both teams are getting very comfortable just playing stand and normal compositions. Here, play the Genjis, and that's got a matchup as well. Zest versus Choi. It's been a very interesting one. Choi's been so good so far in this meta. Kron taking a bit of early damage here. Yeah, they're on the hunt for Choi Sewan. Isolated by the rest of the team. It's just an easy pick up there with a the Railgun. MN3, two taps, two kills. Just needs to find another one. That's deal done. Fusion taking the first cap. Yep, Choi going down, Krong, and the rest to follow from the charge, and nobody died at all from the Philly Fusion, so five alive here as we push on forward. Ultimates start to get ahead as well, very importantly for the Fusion. Uh, Farway does keep up with uh, his counterparts and is actually ahead of Aim God by a reasonable margin, so that will be something that Charge can use when push comes to shove, but Fusion with an early cap, they'll be comfortable for now. Yeah, hold the line here, Hunter Charge. Oh, what okay. a shot onto Choi! Yep, Second that. time in a row they've gone down early. So we got to see out of him in three. That's why this guy is really hot on the trigger finger so far. Jimmy caught on the side there. No way to exit. It's going to be a light death as well. That really hurts the charge. Just going to burn more of the time or the effect. Oh my god. MN3 is on a mad one today. On <laughs> yeah, keeps on going. But uh, no, it's going to just burn more and more of the time. Like you said, these late picks are just climbing the percentage of the map. Charge want to go as a cohesive unit, and they can't do that if members keep getting picked off by MN3 on the entry. They're so close to the overclock as well now, Avril, that this could be a lethal approach for them. It's nearly double the ult charge, Jimmy, which, as you said, is going to be pretty lethal because we're heading into what is finally, you know, I would technically say this is about to be the second fight because even though we've had like three kills in a row, those aren't really fights, just kind of short skirmishes across the map, three picks that kind of put the Chung uh, Guangzhou charge behind. Now, fully fusion should be the overclock coming through, but soon he's just killed him in three. I don't know how I mean, he's that far forward. He's basically leading the charge for his team there, puts him in such a vulnerable state. And now they've opened it up. They did manage to trade away Krong for this one, though. So the Sojourn for the Junker Queen. They're holding the line still. Fury is just able to lock down the point. And we're pushing into final fight territory now. Zest is over in the spawn room, cutting off the respawns from Charge. And Charge don't have ultimates yet. Now, finally, they get a couple ultimates available. Fusion haven't spent. they got four up currently so far. Zerni is going down as well. Fixer oh, finds that one solo. Zesha uh, down. is done. Disruptor finds Zest. There's MN3 with that overclock. One shot off the far way. Does the trick. Oh, and my. for Krong. MN3 is having an incredible round, Avril. This is unreal. Most of these fights have not even got started because he's been there with the headshots, clicking and removing the charge from the field. And that's the smile I like to see as well. MN3 is feeling fired up. He's confident. He knows what's going on. MN3 can that final fight. And the Philly Fusion comfortably take a 1-0 lead in this opening map here. 100-0 as well. Charge completely absent from any of those fights. In fact, Philly Fusion have barely died. I mean, they only had two deaths the entire time. Yeah, Zest had a blaze shut down. M3 did die to, I think, Xerneas. I'm still not exactly sure how that occurred. But beyond that, Fury and God Fixer all still deathless. Only two frags from charge that entire opening round. It is a bit of a disastrous opening for the Guangzhou charge, but for Philly Fusion, exactly what you want to see. All right, here we go. Round number two, moving on to the gardens. Choi did pivot on to the far for the time being. So we're going to have that different variation in effect for this round. The rest of the team's going to migrate over to the point. Fury, a little bit isolated for now. Very vulnerable to these rockets. The entire team's just charging at the Fury. Here come the reinforcements from the Fusion, though. They're collapsing, but it's too late to save them. And the isolated Fury going down early, and this is Charge clapping back on round number two. Now coming through with a variation. Choi Sehuan on towards the fire. We kind of did allude to maybe there's being a possibility for the Charge to flex onto. I said maybe Joy wouldn't do it because the Genji has been really good. But at the same time, he did get clapped on an opening round. Maybe a bit of a risk is required here. And now a risk does pay off for the Guangzhou Charge. Fusion though. See how they bounce back into this one. So uh, you still have at least Aim God getting away with his life. So not a complete team wipe coming through from the Guangzhou Charge. Just now. Moving over towards the Echo, predictably, to try and counter Choi. It's always such a strong move to deal with the far. The Echo just seems to win these matchups all the time. So, should give Fusion the edge in the sky battle, which will translate into the ground. A oh, couple of wow. directs find MN3, though. He's not the only damage lineup who can be accurate when it comes to these projectiles. They're going to have Choice A1 just nailed him. He needs to pay attention to where Zest is, though. He's still hovering around, hunting for him. Jimmy's going to try and keep that Echo in check, though, I feel. It's just two directs coming through from Choi, exactly as you need on a very important member of MN3. Very similar in, in some cases to what Fusion were doing to charge earlier on via MN3's rails, right? Just solo picks slowing down the Philadelphia Fusion, or in this case, that was the Guangzhou charge of the previous round. 
Now Choi's about to get this barrage on life. Should be the first ultimate through. Zest in a one versus one. Trying to get Choi down, but can't do it. Yeah, I think he picked up a pack there just to restore him. If he didn't have access to the Mega, he would have really struggled there, but just delays the inevitable. Zest able to pick up that kill. Goes back to the sky. 27 HP outside of Farway's range, but Jimmy, he has the railgun. You can't escape that one. Flip comes in for fusion while this whole outside skirmish was happening. Yeah, it's cool. I mean, you'll oh! kill and M3 will kill Choi again. You will get uh, Zest down if you are the Guangzhou charge, but you lose everybody else. And as yeah. soon as Choi respawns, he instantly gets killed. So it's actually six deaths in that particular fight. Really good for the fusion to pick up, especially in the alt charge department as well. And Choi is actually still waiting to get that barrage online. Sitting in the 90s here has been for a reasonable while. Charge of the capability to make the comeback here, but I think once you have the attacking fire and you're not defending with the fire, it's a lot harder to get that value going. You want to be defending chokes as a fire, attacking chokes, really not the same deal. No, you can see the flank coming in, they're just trying to hover around the outskirts of the point, but I mean, kept in check. Rallies both pop, there's the barrage coming in from Choi. It clears space, but doesn't just result dead. in any kills, and MM3 picks off the static fire. With the right click, duplication possessed coming in. There's another jungle queen on the field. Carnage cuts through, but it's MM3 beats into the punch with the kill. Far away, not going to last this one. Great jagged knife pull into Jimmy to help MM3 pick off that kill. And now they've surpassed the charge's charge and are aiming towards the end of this map. No casualties either there. Aim God, by the way, is still deathless. The only one that went down was this on the duplicate. You're okay with that one. M3 shutting down Choi was so huge, and that means zero value found on the rocket barrage. You expect a lot more from Choi in that exact play. A one for one is kind of the minimum. Contra charge now back over towards the Genji. M3 on the rails for the overclock. Charge is just trying the to scatter. Option. Say the only option is to scatter, Admiral. <laughs> you can't like hide in the sight lines. They're too long on that bridge coming from White Room that you're just so vulnerable to M3 picking you off. You know he's on fire today. Why chance it? Here's Jimmy's oh, chance. There it is. Oh! There's the chance coming in with the overclock. Waits for it to expire, finds it on to MN3, turns the attention around to Zest, unable to find a connection here. Wrong. Having to clean it up as Jimmy skirts away to safety. Thankfully, the charge managed to clear out the fusion at 99%. They'll get the flip. But now, they have the rampage and a beat to cut through, but I think charge have options to stop that. Charge have a long way to go though. I mean, it's still 33, 36% to go through once we get to the 100 meter, 100 uh, percent mark, 99 percent mark, and okay, they have pretty even ultimates, right? It's Rampage and Sound Barrier on both sides. I'm looking towards both Aimgod and Farway getting these rallies into that next fight. Also, first Rampage, super important here. Expecting the Sound Barriers to come through immediately when the Rampages get popped. Rampage just finding Hit. four. That's big from Kron. Beat comes out and answer. Fury still holding on to theirs. They're going to, to answer it, but I think they got killed before they were able to apply to anyone. You're going to have to do it without Zest. Still making this work despite Two being three. on the back foot. Kron needs to get out of here. Mega. Flip comes in. Someone's got to touch. Xerneas is there to trigger overtime, keep it alive. They're keeping Kron away from the fight. There's no support for him. Take down from Zest. And now the back line's arriving too late. Xerneas gets in just by the skin of a whisker. As Choice A1 will then jump back onto the point as well to keep the overtime alive, try and buy time for Kron to get back into the fight, but they're playing at a numbers disadvantage, especially when Jimmy gets taken out as well. They just don't overtake. Blank coming out from Choi, Aim God. Moving over to Fury, takes attention to MN3, gets the cut through as well. Choi might be putting the team on his back in to keep him alive. This is the longest overtime we've seen in a while. Zest comes out with a counterblade to fight too. And he gets delayed back away from Farway. There's a wrecking ball from Kron, which isn't efficient, but it will keep things alive for the charge. As Farway forced back into white, picks up the mini, double supports, taking down one. And here's Pixar to find Farway. They move back to the point. They're going to claim their own 99% Avril. They got the flip in the chaos there. They still have missing members, so they have Ball, they have Soldier, they have Trace. It's not the ideal composition to be playing through, but it's one that they have to just try and touch Aimgod in the back line. Oh, yeah, no! Choice of one, booped off even. With Chrome being anti, that might just be quick charge out of this fight. They started the plays alive. Well, they got the flip back. Nice little delay to stop far away going across just the bridge Zernius. with the shield bash. Zonius is surely going to go down here. He can't stay up. Overtime ticks down. Fusion will finally claim map one after a very elongated overtime. Yeah, and I think that was four fusions taking as well. Just a little bit of, you know, like you sort of said, elongated time to get the win for fusion charge. They came back on stall heroes. We saw the ball. We saw the tracer. We saw the soldier. That's only going to go so far in terms of trying to win this fight. Philly fusions still have the standard composition. They didn't change anything. They had aim got coming back on the Arna. That's one thing. But you saw very importantly have Fury on that specific Junker Queen right. Krong dying. 
in that final engagement was what two versus three. Unfortunately, Krong's too low HP. He goes for the mega pack, but as the point flips over, Xerneas has to go for the touch. Those two members in the two v three get split up. Krong gets taken down. Xerneas is solo. Charge don't have a tank. They can't contest properly. They come back with the ball, and you just can't win a fight with that sort of composition. Back in fusion, they whittle down the charge, and they eventually get the win. But they put themselves in the winning position first. Survive against Choice Blade. Get Zest Blade out, and Zest Blade does the job. Alright, it's Charge's map pick. Moving into the second map of the series, we're going to go to a quick break. When we come back, we'll see what they have for you when you return.
Okay, so the first two replays I kind of get, but that third one was just doing Krong dirty, I feel like. Just watching him hang from underneath the That's bridge sad. and just face the inevitable. Yeah. I've been there. It's tragic. <laughs> you know, it is tragic. Every you're just kind of at that moment, there. you're accepting death. You're like, well, there's only one direction I can go from here, and it is down. And unfortunately, you're also in the last fight. It's 1999. You know, like, you kind of have to get back into action, but you can't. Credit to Fusion for knocking as many players off the map as they did. Um, but I think at that stage, it was it was pretty clear-cut for the Philadelphia Fusion. They had it locked up. MN3 had it locked up. Praise be MN3 in this lineup so far, because he actually got 15 out of 36 final blows for the Philly Fusion over the course of those two rounds. Now, the second of which was far more tight, you know, in terms of closeness and competitiveness. Get to Gardens, it's 99 to 99. Choi comes out in the Farah. It works for some time until the Zest Echo shuts him down. And from then on outwards, Fusion mostly had Charger's number. Going to Hollywood now as Charger's pick. Let's see if they turn it around. See what they come out with as well. I know we'll probably see some cheeky little like Widowmaker on the spawn. Won't see that roll out. They just want to see if anyone pokes their head too aggressively. And the Which, by the way, we yeah. saw uh, the Pelican deflate kill on this exact map yesterday. Well, rather this morning from the NA games over in Toronto. So that was pretty hot. Where is the risk? Pelican. Gone. I was saying there's always a risk of it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's just like Pelican, he's, he's waiting for the water shot to come on through, just deflects it straight back in the water. That's the kind of thing you love to see. So, how do we handle this situation here as we look back to our previous series yesterday? Seoul Dynasty and Philadelphia played Hollywood. It's a 3 and 2 victory for Seoul. They finished the entire map. Philly unfortunately failed to finish the entire map. As this will be the one to take the opening shot coming through as well. Fusion now making their first push forward. I actually specifically remember Fusion nearly full held the Seoul Dynasty on Hollywood A yesterday. But they overextended into the Seoul offensive spawn on A. That ended up being their mistake. They're attacking first. We'll have to see how their defense goes later on. Choi already taking a rail shot. One HP dead. What a combo there from the damage line for Philly. MM3 doing the pro for the work. Zest comes in with the Shuriken to finish him off. Not a good start on your map pick charge. You need to try and recover this quickly. Sure we can get back to the fight relatively quickly. Being on the Genji. Joe for the cut down on Xerneas. Missed the slice. They still will get a reset oh, to go to Krong. Nice. Zest just cuts through the entire team with the help of his supports. Will rotate rack round to the point. And Choice A1 will be arriving too late to make a difference. Yeah, flawless, and this will be the stage where you will get the cap as well. Charge can no longer contest. Best thing that Charge can do is set up for some high ground, maybe set up for a fight very early on as the gates to be do in fact open. Zest already kind of sort of marking some space up forward. Choi to challenge, but Zest kind of dominated that very early fight. Though credit to MN3 for setting up the initial kill. We did look at Choice One's POV. He did take a rail shot, and that rail shot is what sets off the momentum for Fusion winning the fight. Yeah, even if he doesn't get the final blow, still being the impactful member here. Choi off to the side, he's playing around the Mega, just watching this side entrance. Might get overwhelmed here quickly, he might go for the kill and fixer. Oh, Choi has to use that dash not to go after the Lucio, but instead get to safety. Nice boot Drop from down. top, brings them all down to the ground level. That's actually incredible from fixer, and it sets them up nicely to take out Kron. Zest and the rest of the boys are relatively safe here. Payload has been moving this entire time. And now he has a blade from above for all of his worries. Charge are backing out of this one. They'll be kind of thankful that they only lost the one. They still get to back up because that could have gone a lot more poorly for the Guangzhou Charge. They could have lost everybody. Right Fusion could have actually clean wiped them off of the stage. This particular, you know, B point, I should probably say. Oh! M3, the beautiful rail to Jimmy. Just happens like clockwork for this guy so far. High ground control in favor of the Fusion, and they will get the other four kills in a short aura, I feel. All right, nice little return onto Aim God, though. So it does stem the bleeding just a fraction. Beat used in action for the Blades. And then Free finds far away. Zest is just going to clean him up after the Blade finishes. And Charge have not been able to find any footing in this map whatsoever. Yeah. Avril constantly getting picked uh, off, it, constantly it losing feels fights, like and Fusion just rolling. It legitimately feels like we're in an opening round of control back on our first map again of Lee Jung, right? It feels like we're back on Night Market where Charge just can't get a fight going. They're constantly down one, whether it's Choi being railed out, Jimmy getting railed out, somebody's getting railed out. Emma 3 nearly hit another shot there. Overclock coming through oh, as Choi does. once more. Talking about nearly, I think he heard you, Avalk. Immediately flicks onto Choi, finds the fine thing below. Ah, uh, she's come through. Choi, like, Charge, they're not worried about the objective right now, Apple. They're worried about staying alive. That is the objective for them, because MN3 and the rest of Fusion are blitzing them. 
There's a lot to be worried about. Emin 3 needs is, is a big concern for the Guangzhou Charge. Currently, they can't even really get out to contest. It's an entire team death, or maybe it's just the Emin 3 versus everybody death. Strongest play on the server so far that we've seen. Zest is keeping up in frags, but Emin 3 is putting the charge to Pound Town. Currently, we talk about charge. I mean, having a good showing so far in this tournament. They even beat the Philadelphia Fusion previously, but so far they've yet to win a fight on Hollywood. Choi has a play. He wants Emin 3 down. Trying to find them. Rally, Rampage goes through, He's looking for it. on the back foot, holds the deflect long enough, support comes in, just delays and then free from going down, but that's the only thing Choi will get. Raid boss down for the charge, but they lost two members in that off the back of Fury's Rampage, just making yep. it really difficult to sustain the fight. And now the charge have to back off, so they stalled the payload, but that still doesn't feel like a decisive fight win, because now they're getting resets and Zest is hunting. This final member of the charge from that original fight. Respawns have come in. They can't even save Xerneas on the spawn door right now. And now they have to deal it's with the cat. play. It might be a cat. Touch. Touch. Someone touch! No! They can't, they can't. Kron gets no, they there do just touch. in time. Oh, gets there just in time with the rampage. But here's the blade from Zest. It's so messy. The charge are panicking. They can't breathe. They can't set anything up. They are being strangled by the fusion. And a 3 minute 43 time bank exists at the end there. I'm, I'm going to have to check uh, world records here. I'm going to go ahead and, and, and check right now Please what do. the record for fastest cap on Hollywood is. Because I feel like we're getting close. If it's not a record, it is damn near close. Uh, You're going to check that. I'm going to check him in free PC. I don't think there was a single moment where the fusion really stopped pushing. Did you see a moment when they stopped pushing? Because to me, the payload was basically going the entire way through. Uh one moment on point B where they lost the fight and just Krong was just dying on point. That was it. Right. Okay, That's here it. we go. And it wasn't even for that long. All right, so I do have confirmation on records. Uh, the fastest ever time bank for Hollywood was 347. So this is four okay. seconds off. This so is tied wow. equal for the second fastest Hollywood ever, though. So the second Holly, so for, for confirmation, the fastest Hollywood ever was a time bank of 347. That's a cap of 413. That was done by Hangzhou Spark versus Chengdu Hunters in 2020. The second fastest, now tied equal, previously set was Shock versus Paris 2021, 343. This is also 343. So we have a tied equal record now. Second fastest Hollywood ever. Shows you the dominance that's going into this series at the moment. Apple does it at the best, close to setting world record pace in a lower bracket round you know, of a tournament here. Now it's time for Fusion to be on defense. No major switches up here. Charge have found their way around the point. Remember, Philly nearly full held Seoul yesterday. I think there's some regrets there from the Philly camp. They probably wish they didn't make a mistake on the A defense. They didn't overcommit. They could have just held, but this time they're around, they're not overcommitting. Jimmy will get the opening rail shots. Very similar to what we saw from Fusion versus oh. Charge previously. m 3 at least responds, but he dies. Yeah, I was going to say, maybe could have equalized things again. But Krong taking him out makes things rough here. So that's going to get back to the fight. I don't know if they're going to stall. They are isolated, though, so I don't know what the plan is here. They're going to at least try and... Yep, they're going to contest it. I think it's the only thing they can do here. As Zest comes back. Just going to be throwing the shurikens around on the point. They've bought enough time for MM3 to come back as well, I feel. They might be able to turn this just Wrong. at the end, Apple. Wrong is in a he? lot He's of like... danger currently. Oh, Choi. Choi down first, though. Far away to follow next, maybe. Fusion have yet to drop a member. No, they've got it. They've actually managed to come back here on the cusp, Avril. Jimmy. Doing his best, doing his best MN3 impression to take out MN3. But no, they're just going to catch all the stragglers on the outside. So looking really shaky for the fusion. Do we yeah. still count it as a full hold? Or they don't allow point A to be captured because they allow progress, though. You know. I mean, I I, can, I don't know what the definition is anymore. I'm pretty sure from my perspective, a full hold is just like completing any sort of hold on A. I think the old definition was you can't even you couldn't allow a tick to come on through, but. That obviously doesn't apply to escort, right? So you have to be kind of weird with the terminology because the escort does count and there's no like ticks in escort. So for me, the full hold is just defending A entirely with whatever available. But, uh, you know, whatever way you want to define it. In either case, Fusion are on for an A point defense. Fury, by the way, hasn't died yet. That's actually very important because Fury didn't die. He gets to come back and contest with the team. Now Zest pulls Blade. Rally for the blade, Zest still finds it, ends the armor early, beat comes out from Xerneas, support ultimates on the line, the side of Fusion is still available, as Fixer drops the beat, but they still have the rally. Okay, okay. 
And it's going to cut through. They're now going to get the overclock, potentially the rampage online, but it's going to be a rough battle for the charge going up against that rally from Aim God. They still managed to hold on to that in that previous conflict. By the way, I just it took me a long time to realize the joke trick, but I just realized that Philly, of course, they got the second fastest time in Hollywood, not the first. Philly, not known for first, you know, they're, they're very well known for second. <laughs> we, we understand that. Uh, all the way back to the first grand finals. Unfortunate. Very unfortunate for them. <laughs> so we'll see if they can get a first here, first point hold. Otherwise, we're going to go to the second. Jimmy on to oh, M3 thanks. again. That's what you need. Makes it so much harder when he finds those shots. Takes one player out. Oh! In his face. Nice flick there. Both the damage dealers from Philadelphia Fusion have been removed. Choice of one pulls the blade out here, so they're making this pretty expensive for the charge, but they want to seal the deal and get onto the escort section of the map. Clearing out the stragglers, no more contestation. We're now gonna get the yep. payload in motion. Jimmy Overwatch, this is what Jimmy Overwatch does, right? You can't count him out of this game. He will pull through and give the charge the tools they need to push on four. You take down the raid boss duo of MN3 and Zest. Now, the Philadelphia Fusion on to a B-point defense, but Charge still don't obviously have a lot of time. Compared to the 343 time bank, nope. Charge are not going to match that. They uh, are going to have to just finish with anything they can and hope for the best in the time bank period of this map. If we do get that, Fury has now finally died. That's Fury's first death so far in our previous fight of this entire map, both attack and defense combined. And he will have the Rampage available. M3 has Overclock as well. Jimmy's already used the Overclock in the final fight with the previous fight of A. So M3 will be the first to pop here. Just holding charge at bay for now. He's waiting for that shot, the opportunity to just get a freebie with the Railgun, then he'll probably go for the Overclock unless he's pushed into it. Here you go, Overclock. Zest goes down for the Dragon Blade just in time. Needs to find a pick here to equalize things. Troy has the deflect. The melee from Aim God will find the kill. Rampage cuts through. Everybody Dodge caught. not fast enough. Four members. And the charge counterattack is huge. You can hide in the corner, but Krong is going to find you all the same. And charge, keep the payload in motion. They aren't going to be able to match the pace of Philadelphia Fusion. Like we said, that was a yeah. tied for the second fastest Hollywood, but they are still on the path to completion. I've got to say as well, you know, a lot of people have given criticism towards Krong for his performance so far in the Junker Week, but that play right there, that was all Krong, right? Four man hit on the rampage. He gets a knife kill on the Zest as well. He basically set up everything for the charge to get that win. It'll be the first death, unfortunately, for this particular fight. Fury gets the better of him. Charge back and out. Yeah, there's a big offensive from the Fusion coming in. They use the shout, there's a carnage to cut him down. Charge, very decisive. They're just like, okay, we're gonna leave. We're gonna get out as fast as we can, not lose any more members. Play it safe. They have two support holders to attack back with. Philadelphia Fusion, they have a blade and their own rampage because Fury was unable to execute it in the previous fight. Still have defensive options. One minute 20 left on the clock. They're yep. going to a direct route to the payload, it seems. It's just a, such a convenient way for the Fusion to win as well, right? Just a one kill. Okay, you're not going to get a huge cleanup, but you do force a charge back. You do force a reset. Now it's going to be play coming through. Farley oh, has his rally cancelled. Uh, amazing shot by Man 3. Right target, right time. Zest able to move forward with the blade to find Krong. Rotating it back around to the fight. Charge, they have time to be decisive on this one. They've left the straggler to go for the back cap. But Jimmy, uh, don't lose your
record in terms of tied equal for second being set there by the fusion i mean that's brilliant stuff it's going to give you a lot to be afraid of if you're a charge fan because they're now on their last life if you would do with the tournament another like, map loss here means they will be going home Char the fusion will be securing themselves a spot in the next stage of the tournament we're going to go to a quick break when we come back it's once again going to be charges map pick How can we recap it? <laughs> I mean, I can, I can, I can recap it based on memory if uh, you know. I'll do that. <laughs> cool. It looks like we got PGM back now, anyway. Like, oh uh, yes, I see now. Oh, 
Apologies about the technical difficulties there at the end. The Philadelphia Fusion have managed to score out another win. We're now at a 2-0 scoreline against the Charge. Charge, unfortunately, were unable to cap point B. Avril, how good's your memory? Do you reckon you can give people the lowdown on what they missed? Yeah, I think we'll, we'll take a look at that through replays anyway. But essentially, you know, there was, what, 51 seconds remaining. Um, Charge trying to come through for a final engagement. Uh, I'm actually now, you know what, now that I'm being put on the spot, <laughs> I'm trying to remember which exact ultimate is being used. I know it came down to a 3v3. I'm trying to remember how yeah. we got to the 3v3, but essentially the 3v3 looks like, I believe it's one DPS with Fury and one support alive. I think it might have been Aim God for the fusion. And then for the charge, it was Xerneas and Farway dead. So it was the two DPS plus uh, Krong alive. I think Jimmy was actually coming back from spawn as well. And Jimmy uh, was first death two, probably MN3, somebody like that. He was coming back from spawn, so it was actually 2v3 for a while. Jimmy comes in with Overclock, as I think it was Krong that was dying, and then Jimmy takes a bunch of damage, tries to get a little bit aggressive with the Overclock. He actually gets one kill in the Overclock, which is nice, uh, but it's not enough to save the day for the charge. They just don't have the healers, right? When you have a 3v3, the team that has at least the one support alive, it has, in my opinion, a pretty big advantage just through the healing alone. When there's zero healing available for the charge in that last 3v3, it's just not going to work out for you. So, uh, yeah, they couldn't clutch up. I think the respawns were favored for Fusion anyway. Given that we're at the end of B, that's close to the Fusion respawns, much far away, further away for the side of the Guangzhou charge, it was very difficult for charge to get much more done there. That has been your Avril recap. We'll now cut back to our regularly scheduled programming of map number three. It's going to be match point for the Philadelphia Fusion. Charge have selected Circuit Royale, Avril. Now, yep. this is another map that you said that Fusion tend to be quite good at as well, correct? But Charge are good as well. This is the thing. Is like yes. I, did, I, I sort of mentioned in the pre-show that Circuit was going to be a very important map here because both teams favorite. This was the best map for Charge in the series versus Shanghai yesterday. I mean, it was the one where... It honestly looked like Charge could have beaten Shanghai, and that would have been the second ever map loss for the Shanghai Dragons this entire third tournament stage. So it would have been a big deal if Charge won. They didn't quite get there. We actually went into a full time bank as well. Uh, you know, I got confidence that this could go this could go some distance here. Fusion looked amazing on this map. You see, but Charge also looked really damn good. What do you call this piece? I actually no idea because I don't think it's a piece. I think it's more of a performance art, Avril, the music. F fusion, call, uh, you know what, just call this performance art, yeah, it's called this uh, song Fusionable. Fusionable? Fusionable, yeah, fusionable the song, the yes. theme song. I'm drowning it out just like I drown out their fan base. It's great. Bye. <laughs> wow. <laughs> I respect that. I respect that. That's the kind of fire that I like to push out sometimes. It's the, it's the, it's the only way I can. It's the only way I can survive online, Avril. It just needs to. Some yeah, things yeah. just have to block out, you know. That's what BP does as well. So here we go. I'm in free. Obviously, ash. we do see we do see the ash at the start to break out of the spawn hold. Not much of a spawn hold there. Actually, Charge are playing that one very passively. You can see that they're not actually going up to the spawn doors. They're playing the first quarter instead. So a much safer version of the initial aggressive spawn hold. It does allow Philly Fusion to say, okay, well, they're not at our spawn doors. Let's swap off with the Ash, go back towards the Soldier. That's the standard play here. Choi taking a big shot. Yeah, he's able to weather the storm, though, on that back corner. Fusion of Claims Base. Zest now having to take cover after getting dinged, no doubt, from a Jimmy Railgun. Hashtag Expected Jimmy Railgun. <laughs> I'm pretty sure there's another hashtag that's associated with Jimmy that's not Jimmy Railgun. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we'll leave that one for the after hours broadcast. And that, yeah, I say absolutely. that, this is this broadcast, depending on where you live, is happening pretty it's late at night. But <laughs> yeah, well after after hours then. You know, so far after hours that the sun is rising again. Krong now taking Krong's a lot of damage, but it's actually aiming three down. Well sorry, aiming three for Jimmy. Even see Jimmy. I thought Zet, I thought Emin 3 was aiming for Krong, that he just finds Jimmy at the back. Takes him out there yeah. with a railgun shot. Zest should be able to deal with Choi here. I think he's just gonna try and milk some ult charge. Knows he's probably gonna die in this instance. But that's a very fast point A capture. Could again it be a cap? Fusion here. I well, think we actually have to it? see because while well, Xerneas is coming back now, they can speed boost into play here. They have to get there quickly, but nope. M3 once again controls the pacing of the game. We thought there could have been a bit of a final contest. M3 says no, and now Charge have to be wary about getting out alive. They have four members up, but they can't look forward to lose anybody else. So they're spawning out of the point B defense store, but now they've like kind of. Well, they're basically now already playing like the defending C. They're so Look far the ults, by the way. <laughs> yes, that's pretty. I think that's pretty standard for Circuit Royale as well. When you have one team 
Uh, winning A is handedly as the Philly Fusion did. You kind of just push the charge back into spawn. M3 has the overclock available. Jimmy, suddenly halfway there, at least the sound barrier is coming through for the charge. Zest is well out of the blades. They went so hard to try and shut down MM3's overclock that they forgot about Zest. And Krong will pay the price for his ignorance. Going down here, Rally pops in that engagement as well. Choice A1 now has a blade to use. Fixer has the beat. That should be a good counter. Does mean that Fusion will have an overlap with the Rally if and any of these follow-up engagements. Payload has just been wistfully just being escorted by Fixer, I believe, up to the yep. point. Yeah, it's, it's been a 4v5 the entire way through as well, because Fusion have been solo pushing with one member. Now it's going to be a proper 5v5 with ultimates committed choice and something did. That's the only ultimate for charge gone. This is going to be a disaster for the charge, Avril. Their big bite, their big gun, it's just been gone. It just costs Fixer's beat. And like I said, we still have that rally overlap for the next engagement. And Troy is just going to be a tax at the end as well. This is not looking good. Charge, uh, they're all over the I place. I tell you what, I tell you what, Guangzhou Charge did reverse sweep. The Philadelphia Fusion in the regular season game of week 17, but uh, you know, that no. uh, watch point Gibraltar was a good look for the charge when they got that reverse sweep done. Here it's just an uh, unfortunate look so far. It's looking like another speed run. Fusion have been unimpeded. There was a minor slowdown on A, but not really. You know, A was still very smooth for the Fusion. B was a complete free push there, not a single fight one from the charge. They couldn't even get their ultimates to play for the most part. Now they need to get that done. Troy with the blade. That rally, but they've already found MN3. Fury has a rampage online if they want to use it. Gonna try and cut through to reset the fight. Zernius the only one found. Jimmy with the railgun slides back to safety. We lost two members right now. Fusion still have the man advantage, and Jimmy's always about to oh, expire. Jimmy. Doesn't want to lose his life. Will be able to slide back, but they're just chasing him down. He's boxed in a corner. Reinforcements coming out the spawn, but they can't Tough, keep him alive. The carnage finds him at the end from Fury. And now Zest has their blade, but no HP to safely pull it out. We'll have to retreat for safety. We'll have that Look big the push. for the next engagement. The payload's been moving the whole time. It. So despite losing yeah, members, the payload is moving up. Charge to get another kill here. That will finally reach the fully fusion. By the way, that fixer death to Choice A1 is the second only final blow that has occurred against the fusion. The other one was on M3. So Choi has got the only two kills from the charge the entire way through. Actually, I like Krong is one as well, so three, but Choi's got two out of the three. All right, Krong's Rampage finds two, Fixer and Fury rally from far away as well. Seems expensive, Zest pulls out the blade, cleave damage hits through Krong and far away. We'll finally get able to take him down. MM3 about to have the overclock online, tucked away in the corner, isolated from the team, regroups over. Jimmy takes MM3 out of the sky. Love the quick POV change from the observers there. Charge Souls should be able to get this fight underway. I mean, they have the health bar advantage. Far away looking pretty low yet. Fury surely gets cleaned up, but as all of this happens, you know, Charge, they lose double supports. M3 Zest gets those kills required. Charge still end up losing the fight. It was a good looking fight. Maybe you could force out more from the fusion. You've at least slowed down the push. The payloads barely slid backwards. This is still very contentious for the Charge. They haven't been able to do enough. They haven't won hard enough. It's going to be rough. M3 can pop the overclock here. Just go to town. He can play really far back and still have effect on the map. He's going to slide forward though, over the top. Beat comes out from Xerneas. He's also come out from Fixer as well. Angler's already used that rally. Krong's been taken out. And then free finds Jimmy. That's three members down That's for the Kevin. charge. How are they going to defend this? They are not. 2.26 on the clock for Circuit Royale. We, we talked yeah. about the last time these two teams played each other, Advil. You mentioned it earlier. The reverse sweep is how Charge are able to get away with this one. But charge don't look in control in any sense of the word in this series no. they've just been absolutely dominated at every step if they're going to reverse sweep they have to just have one hell of a push here and start rebuilding their confidence because it's in pieces on the floor of their offices right now yeah 100 percent. and you know to sort of harken back to what happened on gibraltar and the regular season game where in fact guangzhou did reverse sweep the philadelphia fusion guangzhou prevented fusion from capping sea of gibraltar Guangzhou themselves finished Gibraltar. They did not allow Fusion to finish Gibraltar. Here, Fusion's already got a full cap on Circuit. They've finished the map already. And, you know, we've talked plenty about the various strengths of different teams on this particular map. I don't fault the Charge for coming here. I think Charge are confident on this map and they want to be playing a map they are good at. It just so happens, unluckily for them, that this is also one of Fusion's best maps. Just how that cookie crumbles. This is the most controlled charge I've looked the entire series. You know what, Trid, I... 
do enjoy the piano meta where every team now, I, I, I think Finn is kind of the sort of epicenter of this, but every team now, when they play circuits, somebody is in charge of playing something on the piano. They just sort of, you almost have to learn a tune on the piano now, it's like required. <laughs> Finn started that for everybody else. God bless. Now, for more of a forward hold from the Fusion. Not to be deterred, Krong's gone down already, so Charge, their first offensive to breach the defense of the Fusion. Not gone too well, MN3 was tucked in the alleyway. Tries to get back to his team. Fix has been found out by some dynamite. mf 3 has gone down, so that full hold has now been dismantled. But still managed to cost the charge quite a few things. They are being losing lives on the way out here. It's a good number of kills coming through for the charge, so no matter what happens here, charge will break out of the spawn hold. Fusion lose a couple more members. Fury going down last means it's going to take a while for Fusion to get into a position to recontest. They need Fury alive to do that. Jimmy staying on the Ash. I think that's a very important thing to note here. He actually went back to spawn anyway. Thought about going towards the Sojum. Decided against it. We'll stay on the Ash here as we build towards the Bob. Nearly ha the halfway mark. No one really running away with ultimates. Maybe Aim God actually will get this rally very soon. That's going to be a big boon for the Fusion in the next fight. The Lions are just about to jump the apex in that corner. Charging in to the coastal line. Try to isolate Choi. Hard to do that to a Genji, but they'll regroup the fight. 100 charge for MN3, looking for the shot. Throws attention over to Jimmy. Fury's oh. gone down to Krong. Not the start you're looking for for the fusion. This defense has already been disrupted. Good call onto Fiore. We'll take them out. Jimmy finds Fixer still staying on the Ash for the time being. Fusion's just very muted right now. Unable to play as aggressively. Well, They've lost two new members. And now the Bob's going to come online as well. Charge the problem in a good is position to get point A. Fusion only had three. They lost Fury. They lose Fixer as well. The Rally tries to carry them through. But the Rally can only do so much. Bob will now cover the angle. Does a bit of sliding on the wall. Yeah, able to get him out. Beat from Fixer as they push into the charge. Found far away to lose MN3. Zest then takes out Jimmy as well. Four for three at the moment. Choice A1 with the blade. Gonna find multiple members. Zest, Zest. gonna answer back with one of his own. He's locked in the corner. Into Xerneas. Can't get into the fight. Beat was deployed as well. So expensive for the charge. Possessed is buying time here for reinforcements to come in. He's not gone down yet. He surely has to drop soon. What a stall from Zest. The reinforcements come in. They might be able to turn this around. That was a big, big play from Zest. The fact that he didn't die now. M3 gets to pop the overclock. It's far with the rally as well. Four versus four so far. M3 desperate for kills. Jimmy's, Jimmy's on the tracer as well. Has to use the recall there to stay alive. Tuck down low. Incredibly there by MN3. Disrupt the shot as well. Makes it a little bit difficult to play angles around the payload. Zest has come back to the fight. Xerneas manages to escape. That's incredible. Low recall. I don't think it's actually online for him yet. It might be back now. Charge back now. To a hassle. They've actually have to lead this one. Fury only going to find Xerneas with that rampage. They're going to keep him on this payload for the time being. There's one minute remaining. I think Charge can lose a decisive fight. Still have one more chance to do it. But Zest they, putting the they're team reset. back there. They're reset. They have this is Charge. I'm definitely going back to spawn. Look, they don't have the members alive. And how? Has Fusion done this? It looked like a charge cap for sure. It looked like they had that dead to rights and now Fusion going into the charge spawn. Maybe they've actually overcommitted. Kronk gets a big punish on the rampage. Catches two. Yeah, this is it. Charge is going to be able to claim this one back now, but Avril, I'm absolutely with you here. Big disbelief that Fusion really pulled that payload. one off. I think they've sent over, I think they sent over Zernius to go and touch it. I think they're fine. Yeah, they've just walked over the line here while the rest of the team's forward. But no, that was Zest. That was the power Ooh. of Zest staying alive. Timing the deflect, able to play around the payload enough. Put enough deterrence against the charge to stop them from just being able to cap. And then you saw the reinforcements descend from the heavens. Yeah. And Fusion just reconvene as a five-man and unit, able to take down charge. True, that was a 1v2 as well. Zest in a 1v2 yes. stayed alive for so long. Allowed the recontest. Still, though, Fusion off the back of that. They will be overstepping. They do push into spawn. They do overstay their welcome. And Kron will get the necessary punish. So charge with a bit of a roundabout final push there. Do get the cap on A. So the goal has still been met. They are pushing through now. Three ultimates available. Jimmy on the tracer, as mentioned. We'll look for the pulse bomb now. That's Blade. B comes out. Far away still have the rally if they need it. Then answer back to deal with Choi's Blade as well. So identical ultimate shoes so far. It's a rally from far away as well. It's going to make it difficult. Pulse bomb stick in there. Choice found two kills. Payload is actually pretty close as well. It's not looking good for Fusion to hold this defense. Zest, the person who usually lasts the longest, goes for the Hail, Hail Mary stalls. They're off the field as well. MN3 
will get a staggered kill onto them as well. Paler's going to walk in, point yep. C unlocked for charge. So that reverse sweep, Avril, is still on the cards for the charge if they can complete this map, but they're going to have to I do mean, it again because of fusion. <laughs> Well, that's the thing, is like Fusion give and take here. They giveth and taketh away in the sense that they nearly full held the charge on A, but then they have now lost enough fights and given enough momentum over towards the charge that we are in a situation where charge on C and Jimmy got value on the Tracer. He swaps back over to something more comfortable like the Ash. We're pushing on C. He's already halfway towards his bar by the way. M3 on the overclock. Yes, yeah, nice take down there. That's finding Choi over the top of Jimmy. From far away, the shield will delay that kill. Kron can be a prime target. Turns it into the Zerdius. Wants to go for a snipe. Finds it at the end. So that easy. far away, MN3. Oh, God. Just showing us how dominant he can really be. They've locked charge in the spawn. Two spawn minutes camp. 20 left to go. Yeah. Another MN3K. Now a fusion spawn camp. We talk about fusion wanting to get aggressive on A. They'll be able to do that now on C. This is, from what I've been told by pros, the most egregiously powerful spawn camp that currently exists in Overwatch 2. Process of enacting it. Carnage, not going to be enough. Stabbing Kronk. Fury needs some healing. His team's there for the support. Kronk's living. Fury's living, I rather. Don't I don't know how they managed to do it, but like I said, that egregious spawn hold now in effect, Avril. One minute 50 left on the clock. So they burn about 40 seconds on that I mean, one. And I like death. And I like death on choice. So this is guaranteed, by the way, charge ultimate uh, being able to spend. Jimmy to come through with the bomb almost immediately. Probably just chucks it on the fence on the left there of Fury. It'll be an ideal place. Or even just way into the back. Kronk could just down. die, he has his Rampage cancelled, that's unfortunate. Bob on the field as well, this is so expensive for the charge, they've not even been able to reach this halt. Two ultimates no, they won't. no progress gained. And two ultimates, two, two ultimates and they yeah. won't get out of this. Yes. Time bank burned down, 1 minute 15. They now have beat and blade for it, still options available from the fusion to counter it as well. They have their own aggression for this fight. There goes the blade from Zest, Choice they want's going to pop it, both feet dropped. Rally from far away could be a difference maker, yet again, expensive. Answered back from the fusion and they've not got out of the spawn room yet. Fury still has this rampage to commit as charge are being bodied oh, in the spawn dude. room. Sub, one minute time bank. Fixer and MN3 are not letting them breathe anything. How? No air to be found on Circuit Royale. What time did we start with on the spawn camp? It was about two minutes, maybe 2 just under two minutes. 2.20. Yeah, it's been nearly, nearly a minute 30 now, gone. Off the clock for the charge, just sitting in spawn camp. They've spent now about four ultimates. Still can't get up. This is ultimate number five. Fury coming through on the rampage. It's all five. Rampage from Fury! And they use the rally as well. There's 25 seconds left. Unless Zernius has snuck out somehow, Avril. They're not touching this payload. Look at the point. payload! Look at the time. payload! Oh my god, it's right there outside their door! They got so much progress to make in overtime. How are they going to connect this one with 10 seconds remaining before overtime comes into effect? My goodness, I, this could be it. We have another bulb available, does get thrown out straight away. Bonjo Charger desperate for any kills, him and three on the overclock again. He's been so good at league so far. Slipping and sliding. Wants to pump some damage, he's looking towards Jimmy. Jimmy's the big gun at the back, if he can nail the railgun shot, takes a huge bite out of the charged offense. Fusion's playing forward, he's got a good angle here. 100 charge, oh, wow. Jimmy! That's the pick they wanted. He may have gone down to Choi, who's putting a Valiant effort in, but the numbers advantage securely in favor of the Fusion. Absolute dominance from Philly. And they secure themselves a spot in the next round. Yep, they survive and they survive with flying colors. Very little resources gained. They're up in the wilderness and thinking, is that all? Is that all that the wilderness has? to come up against us. This is too easy for Philadelphia Fusion. It's a stroll in the park and the Guangzhou Charge unfortunately have just not shown up to play today. Or if they have, it's nothing in the face of what Philly can bring to the table. M and 3, Zesferi, and God fix it. Everybody putting in the work and across all three maps, very little resistance from the Guangzhou Charge. It has been their first tournament showing in two years, a brand new lineup bolstered by ex Chengdu members, bolstered by their academy team members from Ultra Prime. It's gotten them this far. A 4 and 2 record, third seed in the tournament, but unfortunately, they will be the first team eliminated, and the Philadelphia Fusion full smiles across the board. They were the best team today in this match. I think that's just undisputed at that point. Uh, you know, even from that first round, watching MN3 do a takeover of Night Market on Li Zhang Tower. Uh, you just knew this was going to be a different day for the Fusion and the momentum kept rolling. 
and they kept picking up the kills. They kept ending fights before they even started. They had lethal spawn holds coming in there, especially at the end. And, you know, without a doubt, this is probably the easiest one to call for me, I think. I know you highlighted all the players, but just especially earlier on in the series, Apple, MN3 just took control yeah, of the series. He's going to be your player of the match. Like, I'll give you MN3 guesses to guess this one, but honestly, from start to finish, like you said, it was one man on my mind, uh, and it is, you know, one of the most hyped up rookies that we've had coming into the Overwatch League. It's not been the greatest stage for the Philadelphia Fusion. MN3 wasn't even playing for the majority of the qualification stage. Once he comes back in though, once he jumps back on, I mean, you see the power that he brings to the table. You see, like you sort of mentioned, how much of a raid boss MN3 has been. How many fights, how many picks he delivers. I mean, fight after fight after fight, the opening frag from MN3. And, and this is the crazy part, whether he's on the final blow kill feed or not, he either gets to kill himself, or he sets up the railgun body shot for then Zest to come in through and get that kill, as we saw in Hollywood. So he's a part of the opening frag, he's a part of the opening play, he's just a part of the play no matter what phase of the game we're in. Fantastic. And like you said, Apple, rookie year, by the way. Uh, rookie season for them. They've come in absolutely had a wonderful performance, particularly today. Secures themselves a spot in that lower bracket final tomorrow. Their opponents are TBD as things stand. Um, but we say goodbye to the charge, that's the end of their tournament run. Um, they're not able to participate any further in the Summer Showdown, so it just leaves three teams remaining. The Philadelphia Fusion, the Shanghai Dragons, and the Seoul Dynasty. Two of which we're going to be seeing shortly to decide who's getting a spot to the Grand Finals already. Yeah, this the I think the best match in all of APAC here, number one versus number two C. We still have game break to come through, Trent, to break down a little bit more of what we just saw and maybe what is to come, but, uh, you know, first match done. All right, well, we're going to take that game break now, Avril. We're going to take a quick break. When we come back, let's break down the series further, and then we got our final match of the day. The Overwatch League is brought to you by Upper Deck, the official trading card of the Overwatch League. And by TeamSpeak, the official voice supplier of the Overwatch League.
Welcome back to the Summer Showdown Tournament. We just saw the charge go up against the Fusion. Fusion absolutely dominating the series. Incredibly one-sided. So I don't know how long the replay package is going to be. That's not for lack of quality, though, Avro. I'm thinking just purely from quantity. We had three maps, and they were relatively quick, I'd say. I'll tell you what, there's a large quantity of Fusion clips to choose from. A game yes. of Overwatch did indeed occur. And uh, it's, a, it's an MN3-0 performance here. Just uh, nothing really there from the charge. I mean, I don't want to be... That's probably not entirely fair because the charge did win some very convincing fights. We did actually see a Circuit Royale go not quite the distance, but at least getting somewhat deep. We got the C point right. So impressive from the charge in that sort of situation, given how far behind they looked on our first two maps. Hollywood in particular, Tread, I got to say, definitely felt like the most one sided to me because we literally set a new record, second tied equal for fastest time ever on Hollywood. Yeah, it's. The fact that we had to check that up at any point just because we thought it might have been the fastest shows you how yeah. it was going, regardless of what the actual result was. I think we just saw it as well. Cheeky little bit of tech there on the end of Li Zhang Tower as well. Zest jumping up and body blocking the stun uh, from <laughs> from far away to stop them from being able to get to the point to, and then cause them to die. Like, that's pretty cool. To be, like, to be, fair, to be fair to far away, that might have been just luck from Zest as well because I don't know that's like... I don't know that you're expecting him to shield bash you there because you can't really preempt it. So you oh, no, jump he's, across. He's, he's, I think he was preempting. I think he's preempting because he's going to have to use the shield bash to get across the gap. That's why I think he knew because it was right, right at the end of the yeah, time. We'll take that. Yeah, I'll give you that. That's yeah. fair enough. So yeah, might have just been some clever tech. And anyway, one thing that we can definitely see here. This is SPOV from his one v two stall right. Um, and something that I find <laughs> very interesting that I'm. I quite respect this one. He doesn't overcommit on the blade because you think you know when you have the blade out, you're gonna one v two. Is it time for the hero play? Right, you want to run into the other team and just slash them down. Maybe just get both kills. His goal there was to play patiently and be like, you know what, I, I, I'm not gonna go for the kills because if I go for the kills, I might actually die. And if I die, the cap goes through. So he plays patiently there, sheathes the blade again, stays alive. Maximum duration on deflect, uses the geometry of the payload itself, allows him in three to get back to the payload with an overclock and then they actually defend A. Now what happens after that was a bit of a mistake, so we can definitely, you know, then argue that it does, for charge, they made a bit of a detour there, took the scenic route to cap A, but they still capped A by the graces of fusion, allowing them to in some cases there as well. But after that, we're back into fusion winning territory, an immaculate spawn camp on the, you know, the C point attack from the charge. Uh, Philly just rushing to the spawn. I, again, like I said, the most difficult spawn hold to break through from the attacking POV. And yeah, charged, couldn't break through. Well, that's it, charge out of the tournament. Fusion going on to the next stage. Their opponents are going to be decided in our next matchup. Is the Shanghai Dragons going up against the Seoul Dynasty after this break.
Welcome back to the Summer Showdown Tournament. We're in our winner's bracket final. The number one and number two seeds, Seoul Dynasty and Shanghai Dragons, going up against each other in their second clash of this stage. And by most rights, or well, most people's beliefs, probably going to be their second of third, Avril. Could be. And it's so many games played between these two teams. I have a big question for you, Trid. Do you count Overwatch League preseason towards overall match records? What do you think? I would say yes, because like it's an all-time Overwatch League and preseason okay. would count in that. Okay, then by, by that definition, I will now proclaim that this is our Classico number 25. It's been 24 matches played between these two teams in the league's history. I've said it many times before, I will say it again. It is the most rivaled story between any two teams in all of Overwatch League. Only two teams have played this many games against each other. No other two teams in, in terms of their specific matchup has gone this distance. And the record currently stands, including preseason, 14 for Shanghai, 10 for Seoul, the most recent win being Shanghai versus Seoul. But Seoul actually did beat Shanghai two times this year as well. Now, despite this being a bit of an El Clasico matchup, our last two meetings between these two teams have been 3-0 fairs. Previous to that, we've had a lot of map fives, had a lot of 3-1s in there as well. Let's hope that this one can go beyond a 3-0 and zero this time around. But I will say, Tred, even though we did have a 3-0 last time, it was still fairly competitive from Seoul, the losing side. Let's take a look at that Seoul roster, see what made it so competitive in that 3-0. So he's going to be starting up today for them, I imagine. It's probably going to be what we've seen a lot this stage. There is Stalker, Fitz, Smurf, Prophet, and Vindame to line out the roster. Um, like I said, it might be As the last expect. time we see Prophet on support in this stage if any of the changes come through so we don't have a Junker Queen meta. We might see Prophet back on damage. Yeah. Who knows? And it's a, it's a really interesting thought process as well because it's like, well, if Profit goes back on towards DPS as expected for Countdown Cup, what does that mean for the rest of the DPS players? Because currently we're starting with three DPS players for the Soul Dynasty. You have Stalker, Fitz, and Profit. One of these three members is going to unfortunately have to go back to the bench once we head back into a more standard meta where Profit doesn't have to play on the brick. As a reminder, Eris is on the roster now as well. Transferred from the Houston Outlaws. He's still waiting to play his first game for the Soul Dynasty, which probably won't be until the Countdown Cup begins. It's going to be rough because I think we're starting to fall in love with this particular lineup here, but we know Profit has so much to offer and a lot of that does come through on the DPS side of things. Speaking of which, the Shanghai Dragons have been absolutely dominant from their specific POV of their DPS players. Take a look at the opening lineup here. Very predictable. We're on the same five. They run the entire stage through. No more are we juggling through a bunch of different members. Moon is not just subbing in members <laughs> in and out, trying to figure out what works. He knows what works. It's this starting five. They're, base they're all like effectively roll stars of this meta. Why would you? Why would you interrupt with this in any capacity? Lips has been fantastic on the Sojourn, who I use the Genji Master. Void has had success on the Junker Queen, and Izayaki and Legion well, have been fantastic on the back line as well. Don't mess with a winning formula. They have not dropped a match in this stage during this meta. They have no reason to change things up now. And they've only dropped one map, and that was the Philly Fusion, not to the Soul Dynasty. Yeah. And to sort of recap the previous matchup, right, uh, what happened in a classical number 24, which is the last match that we did play, it, uh, it how did this go? It was Li Chong Tower, Shanghai 3 1, Midtown, Shanghai 2 1, Gibraltar, Shanghai 6 5. So that final map of Gibraltar, very, very competitive, extremely competitive. So much so that Shanghai finished the map twice. So that's something to really think about. And Seoul nearly finished the map twice. So I don't know if we're going to get something like that again. I would love to see a repeat of Watchpoint Gibraltar. But for now, Seoul Dynasty looking for revenge. They still have a little bit to be concerned about, given they had a very close call versus the Fusion yesterday. However, Trid, i got to say, after looking at Fusion's performance today, there's a couple ways to look at that. Either Seoul, you could say, didn't perform great versus the Fusion, or Fusion are actually just insane right now. I'm more willing to believe the latter, that Fusion currently just look insane in the later part of this meta, of this stage, as you're ramping up. They did great versus Seoul, but that is not a mark against Seoul. I still think Seoul are an amazing team. Fusion very easily look like the third best team here, and maybe... If they beat the loser of this particular matchup, they can get even further than that. Second place is yet to await the Philadelphia Fusion, but for now, first and two seeds, Seoul versus Shanghai. We start out on Lee Jung Tower. 
of course, before we jumped on to we start off on a Oasis. Oasis. We started on Oasis. You're baited Alliance, by a tower. I don't, I don't forgive you for that. Yep. You saw I a saw tower a tower. I saw a tower. Yep. I'm like, <laughs> you know what? Just going to say it's Lee Jung Tower because it's a tower. <laughs> Right, starting off on Oasis City Center to kick things off, and uh, as you saw before we jumped into the game, who are you has their hair in sports mode. They've got the clips in, which usually means did that Vin they're Dame in the powerful mode. I did not recall Vin Dame having clips. No, Vin Dame did not have a clip. clip. Oh, clip advantage. Hashtag clip advantage. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Going okay. to Shanghai Dragons at the moment. We'll get a check-in. Can we get a player box on Vin Dame as soon as possible to see if the clips are in? Uh, but they're rolling over and coming out on identical compositions and finding yep. over the... Flying over to Mega, who are you? Taking it to the Soul Dynasty. Playing very far forward, but now the rotations come in around the jump and the bounce house. Where are the supports going? Up and over the top. Profit backing Profit. away. Needs to because they have no HP and Void's been deleted somehow. Yeah, with, uh, I don't know what happened there. Shanghai Dragons trying to chase down Profit. They end up losing their tank instead. That's going to be the opener first play coming through in favor of the Soul Dynasty. Fitz getting a lot of damage done that you can be very sure that his rail had definitely something to do with the Void death. Then Stalker cuts through, there's Smurf picking up Lee gone. Not looking strong for the Shanghai Dragons on this first round, but it is control, the first round of which. So we just take that first fight, see if we can get any more taxation on the outside, but I think the Dragons yep. can make it back to the spawn room and regroup and come out as a cohesive unit. It's a very extended opening fight as well, one that Soul Dynasty actually kept in the middle of. So when we talk about Soul Dynasty getting an early start that really benefits them, I think this is the best possible start. You don't get five kills, but you do get four. You get a cap as well, and all four of those kills are kind of staggered out to get maximum respawn distance in time. Let's take the same path they did last time, Avril. Try and move over to the Mega, but they are split now in a 2-3 unit. Before we reconvene around the point once they clear out the stragglers in the high ground. Rogue shot from Lip, not going to connect, but he's got Fitz in his sights. Look at Lee Jigon ult charge, by the way. Yeah, pulling the first ahead, ultimate. 80%. Sound barrier, way ahead of Stalker, despite losing. Lee Jigon has managed to get a lot of ult charge yet. Very important for Tempo, might even be a Tempo beat. Unless they track Stalker's blade properly. You have to watch for that Fitz, maybe a little bit of trouble, but survives. It'd be so risky to use it aggressively, though, Avril. They've lost Smurf, this is not going to be good for them. Cut through from Who Are You, this is the flip without a doubt. And if you're, if you're Soul Dynasty, you're just going to have to take this one. You can't really fight this one yeah. back, and you're going to have to build out. And you've got your overclock ready. You're going to have your blade and your beat for the next engagement. 68% on the first cap, though. Nothing to scoff your teeth at. It's a long time to get a fight win, but at least Dragons get a, a very clean fight win, right? They don't lose any players there. They don't have to spend their only ultimate available, so it ends up being cheap economy. Wise, and you get to save the, the sound barrier, most importantly for Stalker's Blade, which will come through in this next engagement. Now, who are you? Not that far off. Vin Dame already prepped up to counter that when available. Check out Dragons, first defense now on board. Let's see how they roll out with this one. Double support ultimates are available. Very muted. Here's a fits with the overclock. Takes out oh, his ER key. Instant After the was popped as well. That's a wasted ultimate, that's a one fight. So efficient from the Dynasty. They just used the overclock to make it work and they get an ultimate, so they trade it out equally and will get the flip back in their favor. Fantastically played. A little late, bit of a late kill, Lee Jagon there, but he was also trying to stall out the actual percentage points. So, but a given trade, just slowing things down for the Soul Dynasty, allowing Shanghai Dragons to come in for a final engagement here as we force final fight. And talk about cheap fights, talk about econ economic game here. Soul Dynasty, they get that in space. They have Fitz Pop and Overclock, a single ultimate use. They even cancel out the rally from Iziaki. So, it's a one for one ult trade with Shanghai Dragons losing. And Lee Jagon not going to pull the sound because he knew that he didn't have to. Now they will use the beat. Play for play, beat for beat. Rally still available for Profit, that's going to be popped at the end there to get an overlap of the support. Void runs through, fights Big for Smurf, hasn't used theirs yet, and I think they might all get a chance to. He's going to find themselves dropping before they can bring it to the field. Shanghai Dragons, four versus three in their favor at the moment. No ults available on the field, Stalkers going down low, who I use on the hunt, misses the dash, just to find that kill at the end there. Good support yep. from Vin Dame to stop the hunt. Now Shanghai Dragons have control, it's 99% favored for the Dynasty. And I know it's, there's no casting in this game, but Void versus Smur Smurf at Showdown at high noon. And it's Void that will pull the Revolver first. That Rampage was exactly what Shanghai Dragons needed. Now Lip needs to try and get it done on this overclock. Smurf only gets three, but it might be enough. Should be two supports down. Well, they're trading back and forth despite having the Rampage in effect right now. They've got both supports up for the Soul Dynasty, though, so they should be able to sustain this tank line. should have it. They have to do Lip's damage. Should be able to. They've just found Lee Jae gone. I think you're going to have... Lip get on a point, they're gonna go down. Soul have their favor. Overtime ticket down. First round going away to the dynasty.
Yeah, successful there from Smurf. It's a three-man rampage. Two members got taken down there. It's, I believe, at the end, something like a three versus three or two versus three. But Seoul have Smurf and two supports alive. Shanghai Dragons only have one support. Lip still in there, but can only do so much. Can't get another kill. And for the Shanghai Dragons, unfortunately, they will not be able to hold on. And I credit a lot of the success for the Seoul Dynasty in that first 60, was it 68%? 60 or so percent in terms of an early lead that they had. Took a while for the Shanghai Dragons to come back into play. That opening line of neutral, again, four kills, zero deaths, staggered kills as well, and Seoul got the maximum time on the per uh, on the on the actual uh, cap available there as well. They had something like 20% plus as they got the four kills, right? So everything going forced for them at the very early neutral. That's the kind of start that Seoul Dynasty have to be able to snowball with that Shanghai Dragons can't catch up on. How has Fitz gone down this early already? How have they managed to get away with that one? I feel Fitz Just removed who are you Shanghai Dragons Just who are you the definitive list. Surely it's got to be like a deflect on a railgun shot to get that chunk immediately like that, right? You'd be surprised. A Genji with, you know, perfect uh, mechanics here can just sort of dash and combo you down. So I wouldn't be surprised. I wouldn't be surprised if Lip actually had a bit of a play in there as well, but in either case, it will be another 5v4 as Prophet will go down. Yeah, who are you once again hunting all these stragglers on the exit? Should be able to escort them safely back to the spawn area at least. Still in range to get some poke shots, try and get some minuscule amounts of ult charge to have a marginal difference. Shanghai Dragons, 30%, they're in trouble at the moment. It's been at least small deaths for the Soul Dynasty, right? They haven't been team wiped. They haven't had to wait too long for a bunch of different members to respawn. Shanghai have only had a couple of kills ahead. They're not running too far ahead in terms of ultimates yet. It's a silver line for Soul, and now they get the first blood. Nice cut down. Two trades answered back, though. No damage dealers on the side of Soul Dynasty. Tanks and back they line. Chase Smurf. And they're blocking them. They got a yeah, chase Smurf. Should be able to go down here. Nice headshot there from Lip. Smurf is just isolated though. Grab the Mega. Good move. Stops the burst. The healing. Kill. Smurf goes down. So Lip has picked up all of those final blows as well. Admiral, look at that charging ahead with Alt Charge against Fitz. Yeah. I don't know if Smurf got booed, but from my perspective, it looked like he chose to drop down into the hole. That's going to be a big mistake from Smurf because it actually staggers him out. He doesn't have the mobility to escape, and Dragon's doing the exact thing that I believe that they should do strategically. Chase down Smurf. He cannot escape. He is definitely dead, and he will be staggered. That's maximum time gained by Dragon's. We talked about Soul on City Center having a 60% advantage. Now Dragon's have that going for them. Right, so blow any ult shit as well. It's going to change very quickly in this next engagement. Lips on the cusp for one, so is who are you? Is the Arkies about to get rallied? Legion Gone will have beat. A couple of answers on the Soul, Di Soul Dynasty, but Shanghai Dragons are going to be the ones in control of this. Soul alone. Look at the HP. It's moved down. Yeah, there's nothing they can do about this one. Fitz drops down. The only thing they've had to use right now is the overclock and the rally, and it's a team kill with no losses for the Shanghai Dragons at 90%. They're going to have to sprint back to the point if they want to have any hope of triggering overtime for this round. But look at the spawn close.